in the figure below, CS is parallel to HN. As soon as you think about parallel, you should be thinking about fun. F for corresponding. Remember, we've spoken about this, right? With corresponding, whenever you see an F, these angles are the same. Then there's the U. The angles inside a U, let me draw a U, at, that's a little bit skew. Can you see that this angle is not the same as this angle? So with the U, the angles are not the same, but they, they do add up to 180, okay? They add up to 180. And then the N or the Z, you could also look at it as a Z, then the angles on the corners, they are the same. Inside the corners, they're the same. Okay, so it says in the figure we've got parallel lines. Now, so remember when as soon as you see parallel lines, fun. Okay, fun only works with parallel lines. They tell us that EAW, EAW. So some learners get confused with what this means. So let me show you. So it says start at E, go to A. Then from A, go to W. Then the angle that is made is the one that they're talking about. You see how it's angle A, and that's why they've got a little thing on the A. Okay, so telling you that this angle here is 70. AE has the same length as AW. That's what they're trying to show you with these lines. And then CAE, now look at that, C, so where's C? There it is. Go to A, then from A, go to E. The angle that you made is X. So the first question says, um, give a reason why angle E2 is also X. Well, you see, if we do that, then what shape have we just made? That's a Z. And what we know is that the Z, the corner angles are the same. So this angle must be the same as this angle. So that is why E2 is the same as X. So the reason is alternating angles. So you'll just say alt angles. And that is because the line CS, whoa, that's a, that's a D, Kevin. CS is parallel to HN. So we're saying that alternating angles. Remember, the Z or the N is called alternating. Let's recap. Okay, alt. And then the F is corresponding. And then the U is co-interior, like that. Okay. So, the next question for three marks, determine the value of X. Okay, so we know that this is now X. The next thing is that when these two sides are the same, then I want you to remember this. Listen carefully. When two sides of a triangle, actually, let's make some notes. Here we go. When two sides of a triangle are the same, then two of the angles are the same. Then when three sides. By the way, this is called an isosceles triangle. Isosceles. Now, when three sides of a triangle are the same, then three of the angles are the same, and that is called an equilateral triangle. And then lastly, when all three sides of a triangle are different, then no angles are the same. So what we know from this triangle is that these two sides are the same. That is what these lines are trying to tell us. So if these two sides are the same, then the angles opposite them are the same. So opposite this side is that angle over there. So that is W1. 
and then opposite this side is this one over here. So that's E2. So what we can then say is that these two angles are the same. So that'll be our first step. We will say that angle E2 is the same as angle W1. And that is because they are the angles. They are the angles that are opposite equal sides. Listen to that carefully. These are the angles that are opposite equal sides. That's why they are the same. So then we can put an x over there. Now check this out. We know that this is a triangle. Okay, and we know that the three angles inside a triangle must always add up to 180. So what we can do is we can say that 70 plus x plus x must add up to 180. And that is because the sum of the angles of a triangle. And so that'll give us 70 plus, now x plus x is 2x. Now we have an equation. So with an equation, we'll take the 70 over to the other side. So it will end up becoming like that. And then I'm going to go up here. So that'll end up giving us 110. Divide both sides by 2. So x will be 55 degrees.